Hi there, welcome to my channel. This is the story of the Triassic period. 250 million years ago, the Earth was silent, still healing from the greatest extinction the world had ever known. The Permian-Triassic extinction had wiped out over 90% of life on Earth. But from the ashes, life began again. This was the Triassic period, a world reborn, a time of firsts, a time of giants to come. Across the supercontinent Pangean land, the climate began to shift. As volcanic winter faded, warmth returned to the recovering world, and with it, new life blossomed across the landscape. Lush forests of ferns and conifers carpeted the land. Strange amphibious creatures with long tails and bulging eyes hopped among them. They were joined by a multitude of early relatives of crocodiles, some no larger than dogs, others growing over six meters in length. And everywhere, the skeletons of countless creatures lay scattered across the rocks, a silent testament to the apocalypse that nearly ended all life on Earth. It would be another 40 million years before any creature came close to matching the colossal proportions seen in the late Permian. But the stage was set for a new age of giants. A change was coming to this humble Triassic landscape. Something unlike anything that had ever lived was about to arrive. 65 million years before the asteroids fell and wiped out the dinosaurs, something truly special evolved in the deserts of what is now New Mexico. The first dinosaurs arrived on the scene. They were small, no bigger than foxes, but incredibly fast, able to run down prey with ease. They were also very cautious, spending most of their time hiding amongst the trees. Their names are long forgotten, but we know that they were feathered bipeds with powerful jaws filled with serrated teeth. They hunted insects and other small animals, occasionally venturing out into open ground to feed. Some grew up to three meters long, others were just a meter tall. They were the first of the theropods, a group that would eventually give rise to the likes of Velociraptor and Tyrannosaurus rex. Small proto-dinosaurs roamed the wastelands of what is now South Africa, too. These were the archosaurs, an ancient group that had been around since the earliest days of the Permian. But unlike their extinct cousins, the crocodilians, the archosaurs were built for speed and agility. In fact, some scientists believe that these early archosaurs were actually birds. One species, Eoraptor, was named the Dawn of Life. It was one of the first true dinosaurs, a lithe carnivore with huge eyes, sharp claws, and teeth for catching prey. Another relative, Herrerasaurus, was larger, reaching lengths of up to five meters. It boasted a sail-like structure on its back made of cartilage and skin. Early dinosaurs were frail compared to their descendants, but they were perfectly adapted to their environment. Agile, quick, and very hungry, they tested their strength in a still-changing world. Small, agile, and fierce, these were the pioneers of a future dynasty. And they weren't alone. Among the sparse vegetation, tiny, furry creatures could be seen scurrying underfoot. These were the very first mammals, primitive proto-wombats, shrew-like things that used their sharp teeth to gnaw on insects and small invertebrates. At first glance, they seem completely insignificant, but the ancestors of whales, humans, and every other mammal alive today were present during the Triassic. They were warm-blooded survivors in a world still dominated by reptiles. But the Triassic wasn't just about life on land. From the smallest beetles to the mighty dinosaurs, many of Earth's biggest changes happened in the ocean. Across the shallow seas, strange marine reptiles glided effortlessly through the water. They were the ichthyosaurs, huge, dolphin-like creatures with enormous eyes. They were well adapted for hunting in the dim depths. The Triassic also saw the evolution of the placodonts, turtle-like creatures with paddle flippers. These bizarre beasts possessed enormous jaws lined with razor-sharp teeth perfect for crushing hard-shelled prey. They spent their days hunting along the seafloor, occasionally swimming up to the surface to catch fish. Meanwhile, above them, coiled cephalopods called ammonites drifted through the waves. They were related to modern squids and octopuses, except they had coiled shells. 
Their fossils are so common in Triassic rock that paleontologists have been able to piece together details of their daily lives. We know that they swam in large groups and that they were hunted by the placoderms and even by each other. Larger ammonites used their powerful tentacles to snatch smaller ones out of the water. On land, the Triassic also saw the emergence of the first turtles. They were small, only about 15 centimeters across, but they were fully armored. Unlike their ancestors, which were soft-bodied aquatic creatures, turtles quickly became terrestrial, spending their days looking for food on land and their nights sleeping with their paddling mates in the water. But life during the Triassic wasn't always easy. Two thirteen million years ago, the Earth trembled once more. A new extinction event had begun. Known as the Orogenic Extinction, it claimed 35% of all species on Earth, including many amphibians and marine reptiles. Once again, the causes were complex, perhaps a combination of rapid climate change and massive volcanic eruptions. But the effects were devastating. Whole ecosystems collapsed as countless species disappeared forever. Once again, the Earth was thrown into chaos, but the dinosaurs were ready. With many of their rivals extinct, they spread across the world, becoming rulers of the land for the next 135 million years. Majestic herds of plant-eating ornithischians roamed the prehistoric plains. Sauropods with long necks and even longer tails grew to astonishing lengths, while armored dinosaurs with tails like maces smashed their way through dense foliage. Meanwhile, the smaller theropods were evolving into cunning hunters. Some grew feathers, others developed impressive hunting strategies. Together, they were a diverse and adaptable bunch, perfectly placed to take advantage of a recovering world. And they weren't alone. The early mammals continued to diversify too, giving rise to the ancestors of bats, primates, and rodents. By the end of the Triassic, mammals were found all over the globe. They were small and numerous, perfectly adapted for life alongside the dinosaurs. As the era drew to a close, Pangaea began to break apart. The supercontinent split into two separate landmasses, which would eventually become the familiar continents of today. Over millions of years, the Atlantic Ocean formed between them, opening up new habitats and allowing life to flourish. Flowering plants also exploded in diversity. Though they had appeared at the beginning of the Triassic, they only really took off after the mass extinction. By the end of the period, many parts of the world were carpeted in flowers, a colorful explosion that would only get brighter in the Jurassic. So much changed during the Triassic. It was a time of immense change and upheaval, but also a time of incredible opportunity. From the ruins of the last era, something truly special emerged, the dinosaurs. This was the Triassic, the beginning of an empire, the dawn of the dinosaurs. Would you like background music suggestions or a storyboard outline to go with this? Please let me know if you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for more. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.